a lot of people, and I'm getting a lot of feedback that are not knowing what CRMs are and um, how much people really use them. And especially at work, but they probably didn't know it was a CRM. Um, so I'm just going to go over a lot of the different CRMs that are available for political campaigns and parties. They're also used for nonprofits too. Okay, let me get this in juiced. Are, are you sharing your screen, Felina? I finished starting. Oh, okay. Let's see. Uh, okay. Can I, can you forgive my ignorance? What does CRM stand for? Is that, in, I'm not familiar with that term. Um, as we were saying, it, it's uh, originally it was customer relations management or contact yeah, management. Contact management um, because WordPress and Drupal and Zoomla and Wix, those are content content management systems. Yeah, and that's the same CRM, and and there are three or four different things depending on what you want to use it for. Mm hmm mm hmm So let me get a few. So here. Is it clicking, you guys? I got my kids to switch. Did it click to no, it's not clicking. Uh there we go. So um go back here. All right. Does everybody see the screen okay? Why am I not? All right. I don't have a black box in there, do I? Okay, great. Because I know that was the issue before when you have overlapping windows. So I wanted to make sure. So <clears throat> um, we've always had an issue with our uh, strategic plan and it's been um, about five years now. No, wait, seven, the lucky number seven. So it's been seven years since the strategic plan has been written out. And I think the main thing a lot of people didn't realize was that it was a template for your CRM initiative. And the reason why people didn't realize that a strategic plan um, is something that you use to create your CRM is because that most people don't associate strategic plans to CRMs exactly. Even though IT professionals are the main ones that demand a strategic plan. So the great thing about the Green Party is that we actually did the rough part because most people when they need um, their, their websites to do and measure certain metrics of their campaigns, they don't realize that we have already gotten the base started because if you gave this strategic plan to a web designer that knows how to create CRMs, they would be very grateful because they'll look through this and see all these matrix in here and they'd be like, oh, you need the website to do this and you need it to do this and you need it to do that. And you need to be able to track this and track that and track this. And that's what a strategic plan is for. So it really doesn't matter which CRM you use, whether it's Nation Builder or Civi CRM or HubSpot or um, there's a crazy low level. As long as you have a strategic plan in place, filling in all the details for it will be very, it take the load off of just the whole thing. So what I'm going to do, instead of doing this as a, a PowerPoint, I'm going over like some of the things in the strategic plan. And 
this is the main part right here. The creation of this plan is the beginning, not the end of our thinking strategically about how to build a party. We laid out, our, laid out a mission and vision statement and analysis of our situation, goals and objectives, and an action plan to tackle. The rest is up to you. Now, the rest, of, the rest is up to you is the part that people didn't know what to do with that part. And that's why the strategic plan <laughs> has been sitting kind of for so long and we have proposed rewriting it, but we don't really need to rewrite it yet because most of everything in the strategic plan is still a problem for the Green Party today. So there's nothing really to change in it because we haven't actually implemented it into a CRM yet. And that is what the issue is. So this is that is why I'm giving this workshop today <laughs> because we actually did all the work already and we just didn't know what to do with it. So um, let me go back to some examples here. So what is a CRM? So it's a um, both the strategic and a set of tools, but it is not a press releasing tool. Which a, which a lot of people use Nation Builder for actually. And it's great, I mean, it is great for broadcasting and press releases and like a MailChimp built in and everything. But a, what a lot of people don't use is all the relationship management tools that you have to use inside of it. And the reason why they haven't figured out how to create paths and missions and everything is because they're not rereading the strategic plan so they get an idea of how nation builder will make it work or how civi crm would make it work so you have to think of it that way so let me get back here so since we already defined our goals and the metrics are in the strategic plan, now we have to figure out how to implement it into a CRM. So the first thing we wanna do is define it. So since we have an issue with voter facing petitioning, we have to redefine some metrics for our strategic plan this, this year, especially. Um, and how we got to use actually the CRM more than we did in the past because we can't do as much footwork. So we have to do more digital tracking to have our data and content more customized to each specific voter. And this will require everyone at the state level to be involved in this and it's going to take a lot of work, but it'll it can be done in a very short period of time because we already have a strategic plan. That's what's usually the longest part of trying to build out a CRM. So we have a national strategy of CRM training sessions, um, engagement, maybe a regional backup coordinators for um, dysfunction, um, non-participating states, that are not really active. Um, and then assist in the CRM resources, getting them more linked up and even subdomaining out. So if we do create a national CRM, especially if we use CIVI, then we want to multi-site that out by state. So for Ohio, I we would still have our Ohio Green Party's website, but then the national will actually have a oh.gp.org subdomain that also has all that data feeding in and connected to the national as sub CRMs, which you the, the national would have to pay a lot of money to do that with Nation Builder. So <laughs> we really don't want to do that. We want to stick to our 10 key values with open source technology. So definitely CIVI can handle it. Another reason why we have to use CIVI at the national level is because because of the data restrictions of Nation Builder, we have to have a backup for 
our relationship management of our, our of our voters. So we have to have that as a backup in city CRM because there's no data limits, just what our hosting provider, our dedicated server, we have a dedicated server, we don't have to worry about it. So <laughs> we got that part covered. So we do need to do this at a national level eventually because the swapping out of contacts and data because of the limits, um, we have to have a backup for that. Even if the backup was Microsoft Access, I don't care as long as we had one, but at least with Civi, it'd be a little bit more streamlined when it comes to CRMs, because CRMs can match better. They're built that way anyway, so you can match the data coming in and out. Um, so I'm going to go to some of the things I've laid out on starting creating a template based on the strategic plan for CRM. Now, for some of you that are interested in actually building out a basic template for the Green Party to use and duplicate at the state levels and what we're trying to do, um, we are doing this on a test WordPress with CVCRM installed. So it does install in WordPress. And right now, um, David put it on a test, just the test domain, subdomain. And it pretty much looks the same. And if you can see on the Ohio Green Party's page, I have Civi CRM, but it's in Drupal, not WordPress. So it's well, the way I have my. Uh, theme set up, I have it at the top instead of the sidebar. I could switch to the sidebar, but I don't. Now, a lot of people that might think in the CVCRM may be difficult. If you can see on the bottom left, no, bottom right, sorry. You see a QR code and for the Civi Mobile app. Now, this is great because Civi has come a long way and we've been begging for an app for a long time, especially when it comes to doing walk lists or just doing any type of outdoor outreach activity and you want to track who you contact with and everything. And this is another thing Nation Builder makes you pay extra for these types of things because it's some type of separate extension that you have to pay for on top of your Nation Builder account. So the fact that Civi has finally come up with an app to um, add activities and contacts as you're walking during a survey or everything that is just, it is definitely worth exploring Civi CRM again for ju just that point alone, because <laughs> we need the mobile part to install it. And I do have it on my phone. I'm gonna just show. If, I, if this shows right on my camera, but I do have it right in the home on my home page right here. If y'all can see a little city. Oh. And then it asks me to log in. If you guys can see that. Am I too close? <laughs> give, me, give, give me feedback if I'm too close. And it's asked me to log into my CV app. Let's see. You know what? Since I'm screen sharing, I can't see chat right now. Um, yeah, I was going to say it, it wasn't too close, but it was at a little bit too much of an angle. So it was catching light and glaring, and oh. half of it was off the bottom of the screen. Yeah, that's more like it. But okay. it's it's still not it's close enough still, to see what you're looking yeah. at. <laughs> oh, okay. Is that better? We have to believe you. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll I just want to make it. sure you can see it. That it is a working app on the phone. Cool. All right. So. <clears throat> okay, I'm on. The first oh. thing you. The first, the lot of, there's a lot of basic stuff, and I'm going to, if anyone wants, I'm going to share this document, um, this outline. But the main thing I think 
that really lacks with a lot of CRMs is their path and nation builder and case, CV case and CV CRM. And I think that's the main thing that the Green Party for all committees and caucuses need to learn how to use out of all the different things because the a lot of people use nation builder they're technically just using the cms part of nation builder more than the crm part of it so when it comes to case and paths this is where it gets um great now the funny thing about cv case is a lot of lawyers and a lot of grant writers will actually be more familiar with this part of CIVI, of a CRM than, than anyone else. And lawyers use the software called KC, which is a, it's a lawyer CRM when it comes to managing cases, especially if you're a law firm that's pretty you know large. So I usually use something like KC, or um, I used to do, I used to work for a pest control company and I was the administrator. <laughs> and their pest control CRM when it comes to keeping up with the t chemicals and wow. imagine instead of um, we do petitions, they do inspections. So they still have a walk list <laughs> in a way. <laughs> so they still have a walk list. So the CRM functions is pretty much the same and they still have to have a case management for um, the inspections and the follow-ups and all that stuff. So it's the same issue with CV case and a lot of people don't use this function. So an example I put in here is if the CCC committee um, had no, to evaluate and choose their 2019 candidate distribution fund, like for the candidates that ran in the 2019 elections and how they were going to distribute the funds and who was going to be approved for the funds. So, you use case for this. So the case will create for each application of the person that is a potential candidate requesting funds. Um, then when you create the case, the case itself is going to assign activities to specific CCC members managing the process. Then, so here's the case statuses you can create. You can say pass the basic check which they're a green member, the office they're running for, the state of local endorsement, and the petition required is complete. So they, they pass the basics or they fail the basics. Next phase is, is the campaign feasible phase. The, the PAC, the website, the popular popularity, the support base, um, the campaign staff, and the ballot access goals, something like that. Or the campaign's infeasible. Then it's approved. Like this person got a great campaign, they approved all the basic checks in this case. It's time to move them into how much money they're gonna get. So that goes into the grant stage. And then you use the grant, CV grant to, you know, grant the, the case was pending or approved. And it's for waivers, it's for campaign funding, it's for bell access funding. These are the different type of grants you can, grant cases you can create when it comes to these type of things. So this is the type of stuff we're not using in Nation Builder or any type of CRM stuff. It, 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 people that are experts in, in Nation Builder are really good at it. They still don't use these inner pathways that you're supposed to create and automate and have some type of workflow. And that is one of the main things that's in this strategic plan is about work, workflow, um, methods, uh, weaknesses, everything that you can think of that a developer would want to know what you want to see your CRM do is in this strategic plan. That's why I tell people all the time, you reread it because everything you probably have an issue with is already been written out and um that is the case with uh crms as well uh big point and another thing i wanted to look into was um 
we do have a technical issue with the, the membership request of a, some type of paid membership structure for the national party. And when it comes to uh, some of these things, when it comes to membership, when it comes to membership models and nation builders, civi and other types of things you want to, we have to take what happened with the DNC lawsuit seriously and considering um, the different, um, I guess, laws that's been created when it comes to digital trails and our privacy and terms of use pages, we do have to separate donations from membership dues more specifically. And we do have to make those two different things distinctive in a CRM for our own legal liabilities at this point because when it do comes to paying membership dues, um, a lot of st states do require that there's a, you have your, a general fund account for the party and but you have to have a separate camp candidate fund for either state or sometimes county depending on population. And what I'm discovering at this point in time that when it comes to membership dues, you should focus those on a campaign fund account instead of your general fund account. I would squash this whole paying to be green thing all together and focus more specifically on what the type of memberships person can have and what specific uh, pathways those go to versus just paying a membership to be a voter that's that's just that's just a loopy argument when it comes to crm so the different membership types i was thinking about when it comes to our strategic plan is um more specific to campaign um accounts memberships so a part now five for 15 i thought was a good one because you can say you want five to go to the national ccc five to go to a state campaign fund account and five to go to the national president nominating committees account okay that's the type of membership that is or the more choices membership like they don't have to be green they just want more choices well they can pay for that <laughs> They can pay that membership because they just want more choices of candidates to run. There's no, they don't have to be green. They just want to support the candidates to run so they have more choices. There's nothing wrong with promoting it that way. And now that the DNC lawsuit started all this crap, now it seems like we really need to start promoting it that way. <laughs> so be more transparent with where the money goes and and, and specifically for specific things. You, some people just want to support candidates to run. That's fine. I mean, if they want to put some money in green and libertarians and constitutionists and socialists, who, if that's what they want to do, they just want more. If you would give them the choice to just, they just want to support more candidates and fine. So that is where we missed the boat on our strategic plan and how CRMs address those issues. Um, and these are very low cost. You could just say five for five percent. Just five percent. You just paying the five for five percent to get national rec national ballot access, and that goes directly to the PNC. That's it. And they know it's going directly to the PNC. And this is where membership types should have been more specific, because that's what CRMs are for. So. Hopefully we'll get this together <laughs> because we have to keep rereading our strategic plan. I even thought about local grower. They only want to stick with state and local. Um, the traveler, um, five for just going to the, the meetings. They just want to do $5 for the traveler. Um, the game changer, the coin up. Uh, I just want to donate my loose change. And that goes to outreach because you I, I know some of you seen the apps where you every time you purchase something so you can have the loose change go to the green party. So that's the game changer membership.
something like that. Um, peaceful, you just peace action committee. That's you just want peace. Five dollars a month, peace. You know, we can do every. It's just something that, and we can do this at the national, at local levels. At you know, this is where we have to be more specific in and let people specifically donate to certain things and some things that they're, they're passionate about instead of just having a green party membership it's, it just seems uh ridiculous at this point this is not where we technically are um we we need to make everything the voice of the voter and that is why that was a prerequisite to read uh strategically doing the most and um i don't know if everyone got a chance to download that and read through it about how to be more strategic and thinking about how to approach um, fundraising ideas and how we have to even be more strategic because of COVID-19. So um, that part is definitely something that we all have to like put some pressure on to get these types of uh, memberships going that are more specific and customized for, for voters and supporters. Okay. Um, any questions so far before I keep going into some other things about uh, CRMs in general when it comes to how to start filling in the basics of what you want a CRM to do exactly? mic time uh, I just, I just want to review a Lou here there there mm -hmm. weren't any questions in the chat but there is a discussion around using civi crm with wordpress or drupal mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned you have an installation on both of those and benjamin's running it on top of joomla do you have is there any preferred platform for civi crm one that works better than the other um I would prefer Drupal for the national, only because Drupal is more of a, it's become more of an enterprise level. And then- It kind of uh, always was. Yeah, it's it's kind of more intense. And, but for at the national level, I would say, yeah, we need that a little bit more intensity and state level and can and just personal campaigns to stick with just WordPress and putting CV in WordPress or um, Zoomla. Zoomla is good community. They have a great community builder. So um, CV probably works for, for well with Zoomla if you have, if you like have your own Facebook type of thing in your, in your Zoomla, then it, it probably works really well with that. Um, yeah, for me, I've ran all three of those and they're the only content management systems I've used. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't used any of them with Civic, but um, just real briefly, Drupal was way over my head. But if you have a team that knows some best practices, it's your best bet. WordPress is easy for anybody to set up and anybody to use. And Drumula, but, but, but you're, in my opinion, more likely to have to pay if you don't have a team a, a strong team behind it uh, for for uh, Joomla and Drupal plugins as opposed to being able to find a free one on WordPress. So to me, Joomla is kind of a clutch of, of the worst of both. Um, but like Filena said, uh, there's got to be uh, exceptions where you, it might be better for you. But in, if you're starting from fresh, I, I find Joomla <clears throat> not as much investing effort into because it it's it's simply not Drupal nor WordPress it's 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 kind of the downsides of both <laughs> yeah it's been a long time since I used Joomla I, I that was back I, I was yeah. using it back in its heyday in like 2007 and 8 yeah that's what I was using it too so I was gonna want to put that in there I'm, I'm 10 years 12 years out of date Hey, so, Pauline, um, I have a question. This is uh -huh. when you were talking about the civi case and civi grant pathways. Is that analogous to the like pass and and nation builder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that is that I is the main thing that um, doesn't get used a lot. 
Yeah, I set it all up when we first moved to, we moved from Civi CRM, but this was like, fuck, I don't know, 15 years ago when it was horribly hard. <laughs> and yeah. we moved to Nation Builder and then I set all of that up, but it was extremely difficult to get people to actually use it. Like, mm -hmm. they just did not want to follow the simple, and I had it all set up. So is the Civi case like just, the same thing, just different terminology? Well, um, yeah, because I mean, the first thing you probably want to do at the local level is set up a CV case for proposals to approve proposals. That would be like the first test drive of creating CV case for. Um, and then, um, well, there, there's another thing that's been added that we didn't have 10 years ago definitely are tours. And we can create internal tours for new users as they sign in and you see the little boxes, help boxes coming up, ch popping up like, go here, and then you go over here, and then you're going to do this. So we have tours now that we didn't have before. That's definitely. Um, sounds like you could build one of those for new users as well, right? Right, right. Excellent. That, that sounds awesome. Because then, mm -hmm. then it's easier to follow the path because you understand where it's coming and going to and and mm -hmm. the flow better yeah um, yeah that's i the like thing. that yeah the, that's the thing i think both wordpress and drupal let you create tours now cool so, so that's that's a great feature that i'm glad that's been getting more and more popular because yeah it crms even for the workplace have tours now they usually pay the most money they pay for is to customize their tours <laughs> for the, so when the new employees come in they got their tours customized so yep let's see let me look at the comments now because I have to stop sharing to see some of the comments here yeah Yeah, we're, I mean, we're talking about one, yeah, 1. 1.4 million voter list at this point. We're, I mean, that's technically how many people voted for Jill. She got a million. If we're talking about a million over probably two, three million, Nation Builder cannot handle that. Not like Civi could, because Civi is just your database. So we will it definitely has to be done and even the great thing about it is that if if we can debate you know wordpress versus drupal and zoom all day but as long as it's all city civi we're fine <laughs> if we're all using civi we'll be okay it'd be so much easier to cross push pull as we call it um but a lot of push polling we can do now between all the different states. We will have to get on the same page. It's almost like saying we have to catch up with Act Blue. We have to have our own API and we have to do all these things. And that's because the other the, the other two parties, they, they have their own API. And we don't. And we do yeah, but to. there's so much so much room to customize it that by the time you get it set up right for us i would assume it's not that different but yeah sometimes i'm real jealous of the way they can just pull it off the shelf and it's already designed to show them what their job is mm -hmm. you know <laughs> and, they, and they get paid for that <laughs> we do it for free uh anyways that's that's it, that's why i like the tours because i'll get lost myself i'll probably want to make you know, for what I, <clears throat> it, it, I've never made. Um, API is application processing interface. Is that it? Okay. Um, it's, it's, um, okay. So right now I have, see, I'm a Facebook developer. So I have the Facebook login, um, API 
on the Ohio Greens website so I can use my face, you know how they say you can use your Facebook to log in so you don't have to remember. Um, that's using Facebook's API to contact Facebook and say, hey, you know. Yeah, programming interface, yeah. Yeah, that to me doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I know for me is like an application handshaking with another application. Yeah, I mean, I get that, you know, but it, it just, um, that's why I can't seem to remember this because it doesn't make sense to me somehow. Yeah. Yeah, I know it was interface, but yeah, it's a, uh, it's just a, it's a handshake in, in a, in a more very plain, very non techy term. It's a handshake. I agree to use Twitter to log in to gp.org. Okay, we agree that you're the same person. So, but we don't have a Green Party API yet. The The Democrats and Republicans, they, they do have it. I think it's like, it's always gonna be on the API domain. So it's gonna say API democrats.org or something like that. The only time I've had to use serious API when I thought I didn't know it was that bad, but you know, I wanted to just be able if you use our interface to have permission to update your political party to green. That and they approved it the way I submitted it, but I had to make videos. Um, I felt like I had to give my DNA test to make sure. Um, they made me go through some rigorous approval just so I can update. That's just so that I can automatically update that you're, you're green and your party affiliation with a little sunflower or something. And I went through heck for that, but at least the, the the only good thing about it was that I never got into trouble with Facebook and getting booted and everything. Because now that I'm an approved developer, they pay attention to us. They let all of the bots take care of everybody else. So, <laughs> so that was the only good protection I had for going through that heck. But other than that, and, uh, But yeah, that would be the only thing that us as a political party would ever use, ever want Facebook permissions for, besides you signing in, is if we wanted to just update your Facebook status to say green, that would be it. And I, I went, <laughs> I went through a lot just to try to get that done. So it's not a big deal, but yeah, that would be it. That's the only thing. Whoa. Potentially, it could allow interoperability between the states, and you know, I, I I hadn't thought it through when you were talking how we didn't have one yet. Have one yet? I was like, we should have one by now. Now I'm having a hard time figuring out what, what to do with it. Yeah. So yeah, that that will be one of the things you do with the API is you know, <laughs> making sh you know you'll go through a, a heck of a lot of time just to say green party on someone's profile so yeah uh, yeah so uh, but branding is everything <laughs> uh see any more uh questions about like because this is really a lot of homework for you guys when it comes to really rereading that strategic plan and thinking about how to break down everything because once you know what you do with the strategic plan you look through the strategic plan while you're going through the tutorials of whatever crm you're using so like if you're if you're going to use nation builder then you're going to have your strategic plan up right along the tutorials of the nation builder and you're going to be looking they say okay this part does this and then you're going to look through the strategic plan and say what part did i need oh yeah that part okay and then you're going to apply it and that's how you customize it. But see, that's what I'm saying. It's not, it's not explained that way. And that's the biggest takeaway I want everyone to. Um, well, 
I, I want to thank you for that because um, I'm on just last night I started over and so I'm now on video four of the innate, uh, Nation Builder series and as much as I want to be working on Civic um, I think we're kind of stuck with Nation Builder till we learn how to use it and uh, I, I definitely that was an important point for me I will do just that Yeah, Martha is more like um, um, it's more like agreeing that your user account on my on my Ohio Greens Party's page is giving Facebook permission to say you will affiliate with the Ohio Green Party based on your user account. Of the Ohio Green Party, you see what I'm saying? I guess I didn't, I, I didn't want it to make it seem like it was intrusive. It's not intrusive in in that way, because it's just, just filling in a blank that a lot of people don't put that part in there. But yeah, I mean, it'd be more strenuous if, you know, we were doing birthdays or something, or, or gender or all the other controversial stuff. But the party affiliation. I still went through a lot just for that. So, <laughs> okay. Um, let me see if anything I somebody somebody said something about the API. I believe it was yesterday in one of the workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, how it seems like Facebook intentionally changes it every. It changes the this you know the it's context every week to make sure that it doesn't last for long because they don't want you, uh, they want you to buy a service, you know, instead of, um, and I don't know, I have to say every time I, I set up a, an API, a Facebook API for my WordPress page, it would last like a week or three or not even usually that long. And the next thing I know, I'm no longer automatically posting to it or posting from it or whatever I was trying to do. But that is nice to be able to do is, when, you know, uh, post to your website and then have that automatically go to the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, mm -hmm. without you having to mess around. But if 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 the FBA API isn't going to be reliable and get to work on it every week, then there's not a whole lot of point to it. It, I, 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 anyways, that's what I hear. Oh, um, one more thing I want to share um, is, um, let me go back here, is campaigns. Now, a campaign lets you link together events, mailings, activities, contributions under one umbrella so you can track the progress of that campaign, right? And I did a, a ballot access 2020 for the like the ballot access committee has a campaign going. And their fundraising goal is a gazillion dollars. And it was set to expire, <laughs> uh, the, you know, today or something. So create a group consist consisting of voters to target for ballot access activities. That would be a task. Phone bank their most active greens to help organize other registered voters in their neighborhoods to petition and record the activity phone call in the individual's record, indicating the specific ballot access campaign and responses. Send a mass fundraising mailing and indi indicated the campaign, which was then recorded in the contribution information of individual records. Create an event to track who will attend the mobilization and indicate the bell access campaign in the event setup. So these are all the things you can do with a campaign. So just to give you an example, um, how many campaigns do I have? So 
So these are the different campaigns uh, we created. Some of them are just ongoing, like social media team. That's just, that doesn't expire. Here's some campaign. You think about it, a social media team campaign wouldn't expire. Match voter data wouldn't expire. Um, and event planning wouldn't expire. But then you have some that should expire, like ballot access petitioning. That one is expiring this year. So, here. For Ohio to get our bell access back, we have to get 100 to 1,000 valid signature in each of the 16 congressional districts. So not only do we have to get 44,000 signatures, 80 to be nice, they have to be spread out specifically. And so I just had that as the campaign goal. Revenue goal, I could have put, a, I didn't put one in the, those in there, but it's in progress. It ended already, but it's in progress. You got surveys to still recruit or canvas. So this one is recruiting ca uh, candidates. I can use this questionnaire in my phone. Usually I will create the surveys or petitions in online. And then when I'm doing a walk list is when I'm pulling up these questionnaires or canvassing activities on my mobile device to do the tracking. So yeah, it's come a long way and you have to pay extra to do that part with, with Nation Builder. It's a separate extension. Um, This petition is still um, online. This is there anyone wants to sign a pledge. So we have petitioning. I can make the petitioning look more prettier than this, but right now it's kind of plain, but um, I'm not really into beauty that much, but this is, I even put a, a Wikipedia reference just so people can look up their districts, just to make sure if they didn't know their districts. And um, so you, we can still petition. Um, they want to also volunteer. They have pledged to sign one. Um, you can do anything you want in here. This is all in this part civvy, but the sidebar and the top bar that's still all Drupal. So if you see the difference here, the user menu, the monthly archives, all that, that's Drupal. This part with the petition is Civi. So you still have, it's a, that's why Civi has to, it doesn't really work by itself. It has to work with a contact management system inside of, inside of it. So that dashboard bar at the top mm -hmm. is, is is there for the outside too, or is that just there for the people that are logged into the to the? the yeah, it, it, yeah. There's like users. At least a user can can see have a dashboard. Yeah. Okay. I, I just. That, so does that include like any member that signs up, or just mm -hmm. just. The, Okay. Yeah, cool. general. Uh, you can have a, a general user's dashboard because with Drupal, you and I think with WordPress too, you can customize the dashboard for each type of user. So just general user dashboards. Um, so this is part of Drupal though, um, and I can customize it. But <clears throat> latest news. So if they're, you know, I'm in my dashboard and I see the latest post. Um, who's online? I'm the only one online and stuff like that. Um, Civi, there's a Civi search, search in here, but I never customized it, but I did add it in there that how you can pull Civi stuff into your dashboard. 
And remember when the dashboards used to be a thing for like Google let had you let you create your own dashboards and um I think AOL and Yahoo, everybody was in that dashboard scene and then everybody just got rid of it for some reason. <laughs> you mean kind of like when they were trying to get us all to use them for a web portal? Yeah. Yeah, yeah like a web portal for web page. And yeah. Widget, yeah, putting our widgets in it. They got rid of that stuff and but we still the function is still there for WordPress and for Drupal and Joomla to customize dashboard with widgets like the latest news widget and who's online widgets and stuff like that. So it's kind of funny to me that they just got rid of that all of a sudden. But uh, the Civi menu comes up differently. And if you, when I click on, let me go back to WordPress. That's weird. Do you see this? Is it letting me click back on WordPress? Here we go. Dang, that bar is long. Okay. So I didn't do much into the test of uh, the Green Party because the part of my follow-up pre-registration uh, pre is um, all of the people that want to work inside of the test model of our GP Civi version. And there's also some things I saw in uh, Mike's uh, presentation that since he is using WordPress, he'll save us a lot of time that we'll be able to pull in a lot of the, um, I think uh, one of the important things we probably want to pull in to see uh, Civi is the office holder titles, since you already had that list. So it's like, oh, you already got that list, let me pull it. <laughs> so that would be something you'll pull into Civi. So you definitely pull something like that in here. And um, Mike, if you added, actually just wanted to add the Civi to that WordPress version too, you could just to, see what, how it can streamline some things, especially with the offices and stuff, but you could add it to that WordPress as well. So, um, but yeah, I was all looking at that, like, man, I, there's a lot of stuff in there that I would like to <laughs> pull into Civi, so it'll be set up already when it comes to office titles. It's just a lot less typing we have to do, so. Um, but those are the types of things we need to work on as a group so i was thinking like okay well this is still bare bones and it's just in our test domain so we can start inviting a bunch of admins and working it together so we can just have a nice built out template and export it out as a template keep it in uh, git so we'll have to keep it in git though that, that'll make it more open and transparent and you know it's just our configurations so it's not something proprietary. It's just, you know, all of our titles and sections customized already laid out, save us some time. So we can put that in Git and work on it all together. But as we plan here, oh, great question. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So let me stop sharing again. Uh, yeah, we have a little over 15 minutes left. Um, we can open it up for q and A. If anybody has a question, you can unmute yourself. Uh, Monty, um, go ahead, Monty. Yeah, I uh, failed to be on time because I accidentally privately ch chatted with someone. Um, I, I was just wanting you to hover over the plugin so I could see what you were running. Uh, I assume that's kind of minimal right now. And, and, and so what plugins for WordPress do you consider David gear? Oh, well, David actually added all those extra plugins 
I, I mean, he just, I just knew that the Civi uh, extension was in there. Personally, okay. But, um, yeah, it's, again, it's been, it's, it's, it's been 10 years since I uh, updated my page and my plugins. And so I'm just wondering what the good new ones are. Yeah, I, I mean, the good, like I said, the the only thing, the only advantage when it comes to Drupal and CVV CRM is for some reason, the open source community do, does more work with Drupal. Well, that would be a good reason to go Drupal then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you mean the Civic CRM, because mm -hmm. that's There's that's like one of your more important. I can do I can do on my site. I can't do on the WordPress site. Well, thanks for the heads up on that, because I I'm not sure I want to dive back into that mess. You know, five different five different plugins that almost work and one that kind of does. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like uh, I don't need it. I'll definitely think about you more then. Hey, one. Mm -hmm. um, with Drupal, is there a way, like you were just saying, to set up like a template in WordPress? Is there a way to do that in Drupal so that people wouldn't have to start from scratch? Because I was like adamant about getting rid of Drupal because it was so hard to deal with yeah. back 15 years ago. But if it was like something we could easily transition to, it would be easier for us to convince the group to do it. Yeah, it would be called a Drupal distribution. Um, I could pull that up right quick. But it was the Juma that you said has the more open source work on it, right? No, Drupal does, not Zoom. Okay, well, I'm glad I checked because I can't. Quite a while, but I just realized I mixed them up. Okay, yeah, uh, just a quick share right here. I, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. Much of what you showed us, <clears throat> the details were on the Ohio Greens uh, mm -hmm. Civi installation. So, if, if I do, I understand correctly that for that test Green Party site. Where you're at now is you've got the basic installation. You still have to start adding all of the attribute objects and attributes to the system. Mm -hmm. Or have you? Yep. Okay. And so yep. we want to you want to bring people together to come up with some schema that will be used mm -hmm. to organize the data inside of Civi CRM. Yep. And as you pointed yep. out, Mike's going to be providing a a large amount of data around the offices that are being run for by green candidates across the country. Yeah, or just the offices in general. So right, just, right. it's just in there. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, there are some things that one of the things that, um, that doesn't, I can't really pull it up anymore is engage engage got discontinued and engage only work for, uh, for Drupal. And let me so what engaged did is um, that is doesn't have in WordPress is this voter info tab when it can put in it had all these already in there the precinct precinct name um congressional district and it even had that van thing i think that's is that europe the van id i forgot i think that's europe no that's the democrats Oh, that's the Democrats. Oh, okay, I didn't. I wasn't sure because I was like, I know there's something to do with API. Some have to do with it, and then you can have their the state and county IDs in here, and all that. The only thing I added was the election stuff, like who, you know. <clears throat> 2014 is when I got erased from my green ballot vote. I got dumped. Yeah. But I was green that year, dang it. And Nita ran that year. So, duh. <laughs> so, I have a question. Uh -huh. 
Um, this is Martha. We have a lot of trouble keeping track of people as they move, even even locally within the state. But in particular, we have a lot of folks, um, perhaps students often, who are transiently essentially in the state and then move somewhere else. This seems to me to offer a good advantage in being able to pass identities of green sympathizers, if not registered greens, off to other state organizations. Mm -hmm. Correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. thank and you. It could be more streamlined if, if we're all using CIVI because at least that way when it comes to importing, it's not it's not going to be that difficult because you're going to have map i have a lot of maps already like the voter data the voter data short voter short standard mailchimp hamilton greens these are all maps i've already created that if i were to do voter data that one maps um That one maps um, voter files. I hope they have moved. So when I download these files, <laughs> I've already got a map where Civi will know what what column is going to match with what from the Secretary of State, and I think they. Uh, I think they update theirs every was it two weeks or something. Wow. So, and this you couldn't do it. Most of these files are too big for Excel, so you can't really even open them. Like the statewide ones, these are huge. They're zipped. If I did the whole statewide, I, I would have to use Civi or, or use we use the MySQL directly, but as long as it's in there in Civi already, I can pull up the map in MySQL. They even have their own command codes. Civi has its own command codes where you can run, um, pull these files directly um, from here and then have Civi run it from the command line to match the data. So that, and, they save you a lot of time if you know how to do that with the command line function, but yep. Believe me. And it'll and then it'll it'll purge. You can make it purge. You can make it just merge and then throw away. Um if I went back to Eve. Oh, it's still not up. See, I have to like probably like merge all these extras because these are probably me doing other stuff that I was testing out. It's usually me testing something. <laughs> so I would either have to like delete all these or merge them into my main one. So, and then you can have that be automatic as, as well. I just don't do that because, you know, I hate too much automation because then it screws up some things. So sometimes I'll just look through it myself and do a system merge and then look through and see, oh, nope. That's because that's like Joe DeMar and Joseph DeMar is not the same person and just father and son, something like that. And I don't want to accidentally merge them, you know, so. <laughs> Lena, um, is there a, like, um like say you want to start doing this here's a list of what you need to install and what order to do it in well the the civi crm is it's it's the one install everything else would be about drupal and how drupal would interact with it or it would be about how wordpress will interact with it but the civi crm is there's nothing else to install because it's that big so that is just the one application or and one plugin. 
So you would install that where? Like on like a, somebody would have to have a server or you can rent like hosting or? Yeah, I mean, you if you have, uh, if you already have a WordPress site, you can add it as an extension um, or a plugin. I think it's called plugin, right? You can add it as a plugin. Um, if you'd rather work with the test site, please uh, fill, if you haven't already, fill out the pre-reg form so I can plug and chug with everybody and set up some training times and just, because um, there's still a lot I haven't really gone over. You're asking for participation information from us? For follow-up. Right? For follow-up. Where, where, yeah, where, where is that form? It's on the test site? No, um, it's actually on the convention page. I had uh, sent it out. Hold on. I do have it here. Um, oh, here it is. Yep. This one right here. Okay. Thank you. Because we want to follow up with this. Um, and this is kind of my precursor for running for CCC since Logan's leaving. So I'm just letting y'all know, you guys, I'm going to be running for CCC, but I'm only really replacing Logan because he said he wasn't going to continue. But I know you guys need me, so there. <laughs> but this is a precursor for continuing this type of training within the CCC and, 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 and creating a, a nice template that people can just download and is pre-filled with a lot of stuff and it comes with a tour. That would be the main thing. Because once we get that part done, the installing part is easy. I mean, installing Drupal or WordPress or anything people can do when it's, I think it's called Softalicious in cPanel. They don't even have to be hardcore, you know. Once they sign up for GoDaddy or I recommend Green Geeks or um, any hosting provider, they're gonna have you be able to one click install WordPress and one click install Drupal or Zoomla. So that part's the easy part. And then this part is actually just installing just one thing. That's one. It's, the CRM and all the other stuff that you want WordPress to do, that's WordPress specifically. This will be only about the CRM part, which I, I'm sure that needs other trainings, but for right now, um, this will be our main thing we'll use is the well, CRM I was, part. I was gonna ask what all it, it like say plugins or whatnot it would be compatible but i'm looking at a list of mailchimp hubspot click and pledge mm -hmm. those all will will work with the data in civic mm -hmm. okay i yeah i just wanted to make sure i was understanding what you were saying because i wasn't <laughs> uh, oh yeah you can easily um I, there's a mailchimp extension for civi i had I had to use that for connie's campaign for governor so, well, I know there's been a MailChimp for, for WordPress for a long time, but uh, you just clarified for me what should have been the question. I, I, I wasn't thinking that I'm looking for a plugin that hits, fits in the civvy. And so my original question, really, you are answering in that, yeah, the WordPress is this other entity, it, like you keep saying. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I, I, if I want a plugin, I don't need a WordPress, but I need a Civic plugin. Right, right, All right. right. And um, these are other CRMs like HubSpot. I heard is great, but a lot of, like HubSpot is sales first. That's Salesforce. That's more like that's the the what companies might go for more. Yeah, to me, that's what the Civic CRM is for <laughs> mostly. But I just want to come to one to interoperate with something else. I just was thinking I had. Um, I also want to ask uh, yeah, that one. Click and pledge. The nonprofits use that one. A lot. I don't know that one. Yeah. 
MailChimp has just changed their payment plan and structure, and all I see is a lot of hater raid. So I am so glad I still use Civi because if, if you don't need MailChimp, you don't need MailChimp really. Well, don't, with, with Civi, don't they have like a? So, don't they have like a per user cost? Yeah, it's a per, yeah, I'm, I'm, per I'm, user I'm, or per. I want to. Avoid that like the plague, like the plague. What, what do you use instead of MailChimp, Felina? Civi. You use Civi to send your yeah. email? Yeah. So you don't have to use a separate service for managing the mailing list. It's all done inside of Civi. Yeah. Yeah, my guess is that's there for people who already have everything in MailChimp, and that way you don't have to mess around. <laughs> You, you've, you've talked a bit about these um, subdomains where the National Party would have a, a CIVI installation and there'd be subdomains for each of the states. That would be so awesome. Could, could each of those states be on different content management systems? That is, you're using Drupal in Ohio. Can I use WordPress here in Michigan and we can still interoperate with the federal folks? That's an awesome question. Well, yeah, because um, let's the, the it would be like um, you'll have a, a another website presence, so you'll have your Michigan Greens website that that probably is still a uh, WordPress, and but then you'll have the mi.gp.org website, which will be where you would either sync data between the two. That would be kind of your flow back and forth. Right, right. Uh, if you want, and if the, if you need to reduce costs, if it comes to the point where you need to reduce costs and and just park that domain, so you don't have to pay oh. for hosting, we might be able to get to that point one day. Right. So oh, awesome. That so would help so we, many states. Yeah. That because the 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 problem is we're not taking advantage of having a two letter domain name period that is just yeah people don't understand like you don't know how much we can do with gp there's just two letters you know how hard it is now to get a two-letter anything domain yeah yeah we got very lucky if you ask me i mean it's gp could be a lot of stuff um felina we, we, we have reached uh 515 but uh before we before i stop the recording at least I'd like to give you a chance maybe to wrap things up and make a last closing statement, please. Um, nope, that was it because like I said, this is more about the follow-up. I think the follow-up is more important than the workshop at this point because we really want to get everybody on page. It won't, or, or we'll be sitting here with the same strategic plan without a new one to <laughs> accomplish all the goals of this one. So I kept looking at it going seven years and, and you're right. <laughs> There's not really anything dated in there. Well, th thank you very much, Felina, for yeah. a very informative Matt, session. One more quick question. Sure, that. go ahead. Um, it says on that page you were on that um, it's not for press releases. And I know we use Nation Builder for press releases. So what is a good alternative for that? No, I mean, like, you use Nation Builder for press releases, but Nation Builder is not a press releasing tool by itself. Gotcha. So that's what that meant. Yeah. So you can still do that in CVCRM. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Great. Thank you, folks. Thank you. I'm just going to stop the recording. I